Hi, I'm Mike Steven, and this is another edition of Gear Up. Today we're going to talk about kids' bikes. There's lots to talk about with kids' bikes. There's all sorts of things that are happening in the kids' bike community and all sorts of things that have already happened. So some of the things that are going on that are really interesting that you can take your kid out biking before your kid can actually ride. One of those things would be a seat like this. You can take your, child, or your baby in this from basically a year old, as soon as their neck's strong enough to support them. Um, every manufacturer is going to have their recommendation for when you should put a child in it. Uh, at the end of the day, I find it's up to the parent's discernment on each individual child. We've all seen the seats that ride behind on the bike. So the seat is sitting behind the rider. Baby's back there. You can't talk. You can't do nothing to baby. Whereas this seat sits on the front, sits right by the handlebars. It's attached to the stem. It's a very secure attachment. They're also easy to remove if you don't want to have the seat on the bike if you're just going out for a ride. The thing I really like about these seats is that you can interact with your child while you're riding. You're riding like this. You can talk in their ear. They can smile. They can, you can point out things. You can actually interact with your child as you're riding a bike, which makes a whole different biking experience. The other thing I like about it is actually a safety feature. Back there, if something does go wrong and you do crash, the back of the bike is narrow. There's no handlebars back there. The front of the bike is actually significantly wider. When you fall over, the handlebars are going to be the first thing to hit, and your arms are actually around the child, so protecting the child. So it's actually a safer position on the bike, and it's a more interactive position for the uh, rider and the child. So those are bike seats. After bike seats, we're going to talk about trailer bikes. Trailer bikes are the next thing, uh, or next phase. Your child still can't ride with you, or maybe just can't ride fast enough with you, this unit can attach onto the back of your bike. So uh, this attaches you to your seat post. It's got a quick disconnect link right here. And your child can actually go out and ride rails to trails with you. Can go and ride actual forest trails. The one thing you do have to be careful of is, is how rough the trails are. You may be on a fully suspended bike, but your child is not. <laughs> so you just got to gauge with your own parental common sense of how much or how aggressive the trail should uh, be that you're riding, but they can definitely handle off-road use. Uh, child sits back here, child can pedal whenever child wants to help with the input, and as they get bigger, parents usually demand a little bit more uh, output because it's uh, hard work. But the child can't brake. There's no hand brakes and there's no coaster brake. A coaster brake is a brake that would be back here that if you pedaled backwards, it breaks. So there's no brakes on the bike because you're the brakes on the bike. So that's the next phase. Now, talking about kids actually getting to ride bikes. Uh, forever, we've had the tricycle and training wheels. The tricycle and training wheels are, they work, but there's something far better. Uh, something called balance bikes or run bikes came out of Europe. The Europeans have been biking a lot longer than we have, and uh, they've got some neat takes on bike riding. So this really, once your child can walk, so for most babies, that's around a year old, they can start to run bike. You can see the seat can be slammed way down, just misses the ground, but the height of the child's legs does not need to be very tall to start to ride this bike. And the reason why these run bikes are so popular is because a child, once he's walking, he's got balance. Pre-walking, obviously there's no balance and uh, training wheels or a trike would be the only option. But the moment the child has balance, you can put them on a run bike. They just straddle over top of it, they use the handlebars to turn, and they can walk all over the place. As they get better and better at it, walking isn't good enough because they want to go faster. So they start pushing and using it kind of like a scooter that you sit on. So they'll push and glide, push and glide. Eventually what you're going to notice, your child all by themselves is balancing a two-wheeled bike all by themselves because they go from the walking to the gliding to actually coasting and holding their feet up for as long as they can. It was an amazing realization when I saw my son ride down a hill and he coasted right to the point where the bike stalled out, had zero speed, then he put his feet down. I was like, wow, that totally works. Versus the other option of teaching training wheels, so you're teaching your child how to pedal first, and then you take the training wheels off and kids crashing all over the place, you're getting frustrated, you're getting a sore back chasing them around. This teaches them balance, which is the hard part, right from a year old up. So then the next phase is teaching the child how to pedal. You do have to teach a kid how to get over the top of the pedal because when the pedal sits in a 
vertical position. It's hard to, for the kid to get over the top there and realize that they have to push a little bit with this pedal and push a little bit with the other pedal. So you do still have to teach your child how to pedal a bike. So what I recommend is their very first pedal bike. You get it with training wheels, but you only let them use the training wheels for a little or a small amount of time. The benefit of them only using it for a small amount of time is they don't start to rely on training wheels. You see kids that grow or learn to ride on training wheels, they do all sorts of things that you're just not allowed to do on a two-wheeled bike. They lean way over, put their balance way off center, which would make you fall over on a regular bike. Also, training wheels frustrate kids. They get high centered on them because they're fixed points. They get high centered and the wheel starts spinning or vice versa, uh, the wheels get bumped and it wants to tip them over and they're not ready for it. So realistically, training wheels, in my opinion, are to be used for a very short period of time to get the kid used to pedaling and then you get them right back, uh, uh, take the training wheels off, get them right back into pedaling and balancing a bike. Um, so that's kind of uh, going from a run bike into a two-wheeled bike. I'm going to explain one more thing because there's something that really interesting that's happened. A lot of times kids bikes will come with what's called a coaster brake. I mentioned that before. That's where you pedal backwards and the bike breaks. If you see this bike, I can pedal it backwards, it doesn't break. The big benefit to having this style of system is that coaster brakes are incredibly difficult to handle. As an ad adult, take a beach cruiser or a bike like that that would come with a coaster brake and try to ride that through a trail. Try to control your speed properly with <laughs> a foot brake or a coaster brake. It's very difficult. So what they're starting to realize is, man, kids are good with their hands. They play video games great. So they can learn how to use hand brakes right from the small ages. So if you're that family that actually takes your kids riding out in the trails at a bike this size, what a huge benefit for a kid to not have a coaster brake and be able to use handbrakes. The kid can control their speed on the downhill descents and uh, not have the real off on that, uh, that a coaster brake really only does. It's either fully locked up and skidding or off. So whereas with handbrakes, you can really modulate or adjust how much pressure you're putting on it. And again, don't underestimate the kid's ability to do that because they can do it. We also have some tricks to be able to set up the brakes so that the front brake won't completely lock up because everybody's done that and it's no fun. So we've got some tricks to be able to design the front end of the bike so it won't do that. So after that, you just kind of continue growing with your kids, uh, or the bikes continue to grow with your kids, I should say. A lot of parents ask the question, when does my kid need a new bike? You know what, it's a little bit of a discernment thing, it's a little bit of the distances that you're riding thing. But what I like to see is I like to see kids on bikes too long rather than jumping into too big of a bike. I would rather see a kid dominate the bike and own the bike and the bike be a little too small for them simply because it will give the kid confidence. They're not doing 20K rides, they're doing shorter rides. So having the right size or big bike doesn't really help them that much. Having a bike that they can control and dominate over and get their skills up on, that helps them hugely. So, my recommendation is always undersize your kids' bikes. And if you say, hey, I want to get two years out of that bike, then let them ride it for two years. It's just like adults riding BMXs. If I was to ride a BMX, it's a little 20-inch wheel bike. But that's what the skate park and all these things where you really got to handle your bike demand, a nice small bike that you can handle. I ride the same size of BMX that a kid at this height would ride. So the neat thing about it is don't be afraid to keep your kid on bike, a, a smaller bike for a little bit longer. In bike shops, what you're going to notice is they're going to have various sizing charts. This is a sizing chart that gives a bit of an idea of what size you should be on at what age. Because a lot of times, salespeople, unless they have kids, they're really not going to know what size a kid should be on. Whereas uh, a helpful chart like this really does help out that gives rough ages to rough sizes of bike. The last thing I'm going to go over is uh, going into getting into the nicer part of kids' bikes. So if your kid, all he does is deliver papers and the odd time to and from his friend's house, you know what, a basic bike is fantastic. But again, if you are that East Kootenai biking family that man really wants to head out into the trails and really explore the trails, there's bikes that have front suspension like this guy with the yellow and blue here. We've got front suspension on this bike. We've got disc brakes on this bike. A bike that can actually handle the trails that you're riding. A lot of times parents want their kids to keep up with them, but they give them such an inferior bike to try to keep up on, it's really quite hard. 
So I recommend that if you are taking your kids into the trails, it's worth investing in a decent bike that they can actually try to keep up to you. It'll make everybody's ride more enjoyable. The last piece I'm gonna go over is plus size wheels. There are these wheels that are wide, so I don't have one to show you, but there's wheels that are about three inches wide, a little shy of that, and what they do is they add suspension. Gives the kid so much more control. You run really low air pressure, but they've got high volume so they don't get flats, and the kid, man, it's amazing what the kid can do in terms of controlling the bike, in the corners, on the climbs, everything. It just is a confidence confidence inspiring wheel size. Thank you very much for your time. This has been another edition of Gear Up. Hi, I'm Mike Steven and this is another episode of Gear Up. Today we're going to talk about bike accessories. After you purchase your bike, you think it's all over? It's not. There's a bunch of accessories that can make you enjoy your riding much more. I'm not an accessory guy in terms of accessories just for the sake of having them, but there are some accessories that'll make your riding significantly more enjoyable. We're gonna go through a few and see what you guys think. So first off, I'm gonna talk about this. This bike doesn't come like this. We've accessorized this bike. This bike is designed to go AWOL, so designed to just pack up, load up with gear, and take off for a couple weeks. Uh, the neat thing about these style of uh, bikes is that the weight is balanced all over the bike. So instead of having your traditional pannier front, pannier back, or trailer system for uh, taking off uh, bike touring, this thing keeps the bike very well balanced. So you can actually ride a little bit more fun trails, maybe a little bit more challenging trails. Believe it or not, this bike is designed to handle off-road, light duty off-road, that kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. So you're gonna see the, the bags are all waterproof. They just kind of snap right out of the handlebar. And you've got actually quite a big bag in here to open up just like a, a canoeing bag or a camping bag. It opens right up. You can stuff it full of stuff, jam it into this thing. You've got all sorts of little lash points to hook stuff off of. Uh, you've got a big frame bag down here. Absolutely massive seat bag in the back. Um, so the neat thing about this, again, is that you can just balance the weight over the bike so that you get to ride your bike how you usually ride your bike instead of riding this loaded up tank. So next we're gonna move into some of the other accessories that you can put on pretty much any bike. We're gonna start off with the simple and obvious ones. One, a lot of people like a mirror, especially if you're road riding, a mirror is really nice. You can look in it, see what's back there. Is it a little car? Is it a dog? Is it a semi? It gives you an idea of what's back there without you turning. A lot of people without knowing when they look over their shoulder, they turn their handlebar into the traffic. So a mirror is not a bad idea for uh, if you're commuting around town. The other one is a bell. A lot of people think bells are for kids. Bells are for adults too. Uh, especially on rails, trails and uh, areas where you're gonna be passing people often. It's a courtesy in the bike world to give your bell a little ring just before you pass someone and tell them, coming by on your left. The bell generally <laughs> tends to uh, freak people out less because a lot of times I'll just tell them, passing on your left, and they haven't heard you come up because bikes are pretty quiet and you'll scare them. Whereas a bell <coughs> is a little bit more common noise, they're used to it, probably won't scare them as bad, and it'll give the, the person a little bit of warning that you're gonna come by them on the trail. Next up to bat, we'll talk about locks. The things that we hate to have to buy, but unfortunately it's part of our world. So, with uh, locks, I kind of separate them into two groups. Cheap and cheerful, and it stops majority of the thefts out there. In my opinion, you should never leave your bike for a long period of time anywhere. If you go into 7-Eleven to grab a Slurpee, hey, lock your bike up, because all someone has to do is throw their leg over the saddle and ride away. This lock will stop that kind of stuff. The opportunist theft, theft. The guy that just sees a bike that's unattended and can ride away faster than you can run after him. The next style of rock, lock, it's much more cumbersome. There's a lot more to it. It's, uh, it's heat treated steel. This stuff is incredibly hard to cut through, incredibly hard to saw through. It takes time, it takes noise to get through this. If you are gonna be leaving your bike somewhere where maybe you shouldn't, this lock will give you the best chance of having your bike secure. So there's kind of two different styles of locks. It, the best thing that I recommend 
is you looking at your bike the, the entire time. So if you're sitting down and having lunch, uh, you park the bike right by the window and you look at it. Another little secret, put your bike in the hardest gear. That way if a thief tries to get on the bike and ride away, it's hard to get moving in the hardest gear. You've got about three seconds to catch him before he gets away. Next up to bat, we'll go into grips. There's all sorts of grips. You get grips on your bike, but are there upgrades? Absolutely there are. One thing that happens to grips, especially when you're riding out in the trails, dust gets under, wa water gets under. Usually those get under the grips when you crash. Whereas there's a thing called lock-on grips. So instead of the grip just sliding over the handlebar, it uses these Allen keyed rings to actually attach the grips onto the handlebars. So there's a few really nice features about that. If you're working on your bike and need to slide the grips off, you just loosen the Allen key, slide the grip off. Uh, also, the grip doesn't slide when you don't want it to. So lock-on grips have become very, very popular. I'll show you another style of lock-on grip. This is also a lock-on grip, but a lot of people complain from numb hands when they're biking. You've got what's called the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve runs down your hand right about here. The ulnar nerve, when it gets pinched, will put these two fingers to sleep and usually the inside of this finger to sleep. When that happens, it feels awkward, uncomfortable, you start to lose feeling for the bike. The reason why it happens is because most grips are circles. That circle is putting hard pressure in one point of your hand. Whereas you can see this nice big flat pad, A, it's much more comfortable to grip and hold onto, and B, relieves pressure off the ulnar nerve and allows your hand to rest comfortably on the bike. Those are a couple grips. May as well go to saddles. That's another part that touches your body. People always complain, oh man, is there a comfortable bike seat out there? Absolutely there is. A lot of stock bike seats, they're okay, they'll get the job done, and you know what, your butt will get used to it, but you can buy aftermarket saddles that are significantly more comfortable. You can buy right up to these kind of cruiser saddles that'll fit on pretty much any bike. Tons of surface area. Where these guys are fantastic, the person that rides their bike three, four times a month. Their butt never gets a chance to get toughened up, so you got a nice big surface area. Feels like sitting in a lawn chair. They're really comfortable. Um, the other things that can make a difference is some of the technologies that have happened in saddles. This groove cut through the center of the saddle. There's the groove cut for men and women. And let me bring up that point. There is men's and ladies specific saddles. We are built a little differently down there and the saddle engineers have figured that out and they've actually developed saddles for men and for women. So when you get into the real technical end of, uh, of designing saddles, you're going to notice that there's men's and women's specific. Um, the relief zone through the center. For guys, take pressure off the perineal, stop you from going numb. Uh, so it creates a lot more comfort, allows you to sit just on your sit bones. Your sit bones are the part that gets sore on your bike, believe it or not. If your sit bones are wider spaced, what's going to happen is they're going to purchase on the edge of the seat and they're going to try to open up like this. That's going to make you feel very uncomfortable because it's trying to open up your hips. It's not a very good feeling. So getting the right width of saddle is really important. Go down to your local bike shop. They should be able to help you find the right width of saddle and the right style of saddle for what you're doing. But believe me when I say there's many options out there to get comfortable on a bike and you don't have to be uncomfortable. We went over a lot of big options to carry stuff on bikes at the very beginning of this. Let's go over some compact options. This little bag sits right up underneath the seat, very similar to that huge one that's sitting underneath the seat. And this guy is just enough for a road biker to be able to take two tubes, two CO2 cartridges, enough to change your, your flat and throw 20 bucks in there just in case you're hungry somewhere out on the ride. But nice, small, compact under the seat bag. These are really popular for, like I say, road bikes. Next thing that happens, a lot of people ask for a bike computer. There's bike computers that range from, man, all the way from like probably $20 all the way up to five, six, seven, a thousand dollars for some of the high-end really techy ones. What a lot of people don't realize is that your cell phone that you own, it's a very powerful computer and it can be a bike computer. Uh, so what you can do is you can take your cell phone, you can put an app on it. Uh, there's lots of free apps out there and then you can attach your cell phone, depending on the size, like a plus one or something a little smaller, you can attach it directly onto your handlebars or your bike. So you can use your phone as a bike computer. So it's kind of a neat way to go. Next up to bat, we'll talk about kind of commuting around town, some of that fun stuff, uh, being able to shop maybe on your bike, uh, go to work on your bike. People that are doing this, um, uh, two major things come into play. What happens if it's raining? 
and the next thing that they're going to ask is, where can I carry my gear? So let's go the reining route first. So there's fenders, there's traditional fenders that bolt on, but a lot of bikes nowadays have suspension uh, that don't allow fenders to operate properly. So when that is happening, you can have this guy that just attaches to your seat, gives you great coverage, uh, attaches on and off with a quick release lever so that you can still have a fender on that fully suspended bike or on that awkward bike that just doesn't fit traditional fenders. The other one that's become very popular, this guy's super small, but it does the job, believe it or not. Sits right underneath the front fork of a bike. So usually mounted to a bike with a suspension fork. So it's mounted underneath the fork crown. The wheel is running under here. It catches about 90% of the mud. And if you look at it, it's very simple, it's very lightweight. So a lot of guys that maybe are commuting a bit, but also want to ride their bikes in the trails, and if it's muddy out, want to not be getting mud in their eyes all the time, this is a great trail fender as well as a commuting fender. But in the fender world, man, that's a couple of them. There's a whole slew of options. Again, go down to your local bike shop, they'll point you in the right direction of getting the right fender for you. Next, we're going to talk about racks and bags. There's lots of different racks and bags out there. Seeing as we're talking about full suspension, let's talk about racks that can handle full suspension. A lot of people don't think about it until they have to do it, but if you're trying to put a rack on the back of a full suspension bike, all that stuff down there is moving. It's full suspension. It's designed to move. So you can't have a rack that fixes in more than one point. Uh, so what these guys do is they mount on the seat post here. They come out. Most of these racks will hold like 25 kilos, which is, I don't know, 50 some odd pounds, 55 pounds, something like that. Um, and you can put a topper bag on here, you can put the pannier bags. The reason why they have these sides on is so that the, it stops the side bags from going into your wheel. So they work pretty good, pretty neat setup. You can put your traditional style bags on there. From there, we're going to flow into this rack. This is another style of pannier rack. This is a really neat rack. This rack allows for quick access on off the bike. If you look at this channel right up here, it's great for commuters, great for uh, people that are on and off their bikes often. This slides onto the channel and as you see it just locks into place. Now that's locked onto your bike. So you ride, you get to wherever you need to go, you push the button again and the whole bag just slides off the bike. So fast and easy to use. You can get these topper bags with just this size you can get ones that fold down the sides the the pockets open and they give you more cargo room on the sides there's lots of options in bags the other thing that i think is really cool is this guy i might be showing my age by saying this thing's cool but it is this thing right here actually slides onto this rack system as well but as you can see it's a grocery basket so you can basically wheel it through the store on the wheels pay for your stuff slide it right onto the bike the handle depresses, goes right down out of the way. When you're not using it, it'll crush flat and just sit on the rack flat. It's kind of a neat, unique system for that person that says, you know what, each day on my way home from work, I like to get some fresh veggies or whatever. It's an awesome way to be able to do that. Last but not least, there's all the cheerful baskets. Man, we got a heap load of wicker baskets, fun painted color baskets. You can put baskets on pretty much any bike. You first have to decide what rack you want, then you can start to put some fun baskets on there. This guy, you can see that opening mechanism just clips right onto a rack system like that. So you just put it on, clip it, walk away. So it comes on and off nice and fast, uh, yet you've got a pretty big area to be able to throw some stuff. Front baskets are always fun. Uh, so this, this one does clip on and off quite easy, uh, sits on the front handlebars. They're not designed to carry a ton of weight, this, this style of basket, but they are designed to be fast on, off, and cheerful and quick access. So if you need something while you're riding, if your phone's in there and you've got to be able to take a call, you can stop quickly, grab your phone. The other thing that uh, people are liking, ladies in particular, are liking these guys. And what they are is they're called basket liners. So there's all sorts of different kinds of basket liners. They sit in your basket. They've got all sorts of little pockets for keys, wallets, all that kind of stuff. But then when you get off the bike, you just grab it and you've got a quick little bag to be able to take into the store, uh, do whatever you need to do. The fact of the matter is there's an accessory for almost anything you want to do on a bicycle. So all you have to do is ask and you'll find the right accessory for your bike to make your biking absolutely perfect. Thanks for watching. Gear up.